Okay, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and today we're in central Victoria again, Australia. We're in the middle of the day, we've got high noon. Today I'm working on, again, my favourite stuff, clear primed Belgian linen. I'm going for a smaller vertical one today, and um, hopefully I've got the pallets set up nicely here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, I've got a beautiful subject, a nice dam, and uh, the beautiful golden paddocks of summer. So again, it's a classic land of blue and gold. All right, as usual, blocked in just a few darks and a few whatever just to compose the picture. Now I think I'll get into it. Okay, let's go. All right, by the way, it is extremely hot today, so um, just got to work with it though. Camera doesn't seem to be able to pick up the heat. All right, biggest differences I might go for. I'm going to get some of that water in, that beautiful reflection. So, let's see what we've got here. Bit of burnt sienna, bit of cat orange and yellow ochre. Downward marks. You can apply it sideways first. Hang on, let's just mix up a bit more of that. You can apply it sideways also, but it's always good to finish with downward marks if you're working with a reflection, because it just gives the feeling of reflections, basically. Now, through here there's some beautiful, subtle colours, so I'm just going to try and bang them in. Some nice yellow ochres and burnt siennas. That's where the shallow water is, and the water's got a kind of a tea stain almost from the, the eucalyptus leaves. It's put a nice tannin in the water. Gives you a beautiful colour. Okay, so I want that to be there, that to be there. That to run off like so. Now, let's have a look at this. I'm starting to see a slight mauve in that water with that tea tannin on the edge here. Squint the eyes a bit. Right. Quite a deep tone in the foreground. Mix a few colours there, a bit of magenta, a bit of spectrum blue, or not, cobalt blue, sorry, and uh, burnt sienna. That needs more burnt sienna and magenta, straight up I can see that. I want it to be quite a deep tone in here. See what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm not standing in the way. I thought I'd better have a look at that. Okay, now. Just go to a slightly paler blue reflection of the sky. level cloud again today which is changing the colour of the water ever so slightly. Slightly lighter again as it's gone a bit higher. Blue, maybe a tad of yellow ochre this time. Let's try that one. Blue. Tiny bit of yellow ochre, not too much. A little bit of red on the corner of that, I'll get rid of that. Okay, just put that there. Just drop this one in the bin. Okay, biggest difference is right. Let's 
kind of mix up some of that kind of grassy, what have we got here? A few bits of grassy tones on the edge of the bank there. Voila. Just going to see what tone we've got first. upward mark maybe to give the feeling of uh, grass growing. Spread it around a bit. Right. Now. Downward marks to give that reflective quality. I'll go a little bit greener now. I can see there's a stronger chromatic saturation of well, green. So I'm using yellow ochre and uh, cobalt. Oh, yellow ochre and Viridian green. So let's just flick a bit more green in that mix. Flick a little bit up around so. I'm here. Deeper in tone there. Alright. A little bit around the edges of the water. I might just have a look at that from a distance. Okay, now. Yeah. Might be long before I put the sky in and some of that orange cliff. Let's just get a little bit of the bank going. Got a bit of a cat orange and burnt sienna so far. Let's see how we go on that one. You produce a bit of magenta, believe it or not. There's a bit of wind coming through. Sometimes a bit of magenta in that orange mix just knocks it back a little bit. Gives you the feeling that you want. Now I'm just lightly touching here, You're not putting huge amounts of pressure on, but I've still got plenty of paint, it's fairly really loaded. Okay. We'll have a look at that one. Too bad. You produce a little bit of a rocky variety in this uh, foregroundy stuff. Some nice, introduce some nice subtle colours, just lightly dragging. Now, tonally I'm noticing, here we go, the edge of the bank, where it's, where the bank's wet, there's a darker tone. Lightly grayed off too. Hmm, interesting colour. Add a bit more yellow ochre. That's a good thing about painting on site, you get to see the subtlety of the colours easier. It's easier to make the adjustments that you need to do. Just going to deepen the tone a little bit here as it comes into the foreground. Some chunky rocks here I'm noticing, so bung those ones in right now before I miss that. A bit more orange and yellow ochre. A bit more of some magenta, believe it or not, again. I'm going to bung that one into the mix. Magenta, cat orange, bit of yellow ochre, half mixed. Just adding a bit of it as I go through like so, and that's creating the illusion of that bank there, hopefully. Of 
Hmm. Lighten that stone off a tad. Now that needs more yellow ochre in that mix. Just got to work out which way I want the composition to flow there, so I'm going to have a look from back here. Adding a slightly lighter tone into those reflections. I haven't mixed all these together yet, but I'll get around to that one. Now, obviously the biggest difference is the sky now. I better put one in. Okay. Move some of this to the side. There's a bit of high level cloud around, like I said earlier. So, you've got a lot of warm tones in the sky today. Not just the cool blue tones, there's quite a few warm ones as well. That can work out quite nice, provided the high level cloud doesn't get in the way of the uh, sun and block everything. The sun's still out for now, so let's say get into it before it changes. Looks like a warmish tone, so I'll throw burnt in and white. But it is greyed off, so you've got a bit of blue and magenta, maybe. Kind of a grey, warm tone. Go okay, by feel. I'll mix up a bit of a brew and then I'll just put it on and have a look. Not bad, but I'm going to mix up another little pile over here with a little bit more of a blue dominance. Like so. Half mix that into that to try and pull the two together. Give me a kind of grey warm tone. That's not bad, let me have a look from back here. It's pretty good, but before I go any further, I've just overlooked a couple of little trees that I want to bung in, so I better put their shadow tone in right now before I put any more of those light tones. Okay, so, get rid of that. Green dominance. Little bung that comes just above the horizon there. Adjusting the tones as I go. Right. Maybe another bit of a one here. So. Keep working round and around, never finish any never finishing anything before something else. I'm noticing that this tone here is lighter than that, so... Right, get that sky in. Take some paint, hang on. Take some paint off there. It's always fun and games with a palette knife, painting around all the edges in here like this. Yeah. Almost feel like you've got your hands tied behind your back. It's a little clumsy. But, in saying that, you can get some great effects. That's why I still like to use a palette knife for pretty much everything. I'll drop into a brush occasionally, but only occasionally. 
Now I've added a bit more blue to the mix. Oops, that blue needs to get mixed in a bit. So it stops leaving those dark patches. Just lightly touch it through there. Only just touching, hardly even putting any pressure. Just enough so it drops a bit of paint off as you go. Okay, let's do some grass with you for the trees here. Bend that in like that. Get rid of that. Clean that up. Like so. Pulling it down to the edge of the sky. I'm getting a cleaner edge there. Right, a bit more blue. White. Mixing that one up. What have we got here? Lightly fluffing bits in here and there. Get that nice clean when you're working with the sky. A bit more blue, maybe a touch of magenta in the mix now as I'm going up higher. Alright, now I think I've gone a little bit too much, so I'll lighten it off with a bit of white. Yep. Lightly, lightly touch it through. Okay, I'll go a little darker. Up in this top corner. Right. Up in there. Up in there. Let me pull that across. See if I can find a bit of that sky, that sky tone. I mean, not the sky tone, the high level cloud tone. Pull that in like so. Okay, now introduce a bit of, I've got the uh, shadow tone of the foliage in there on that tree, now I'll introduce a little bit of a light source on that tree, on the foliage itself. So I'll go a bit of yellow ochre, maybe a bit of that sky blue can go in the mix. Yeah, it's fairly warm, I'm going to drop a tiny bit of red in. Every day slightly different. Okay, let's have a look, just be very careful, just lightly Mm. I just add a tiny bit of the magenta, Oop, what am I doing? Tiny bit of magenta in that mix, which will darken it a little bit. But also just get it more the colour I want basically. Right, it's getting closer to what I want. Just lightly dragging it through, not, not touching too heavy. Okay, now, let's clean up a bit of this. I'm working with a smaller palette today. It's giving me less room to uh, play around, so I'm gonna have to keep it fairly clean, keep moving any colors that are not getting used, clean them off to the side so I can freshen things up. Just 
dark tone here, fairly dark. I can hear that wind in the distance, there's a big gust of wind coming through. trunk now warming up with a bit of yellow ochre is down lower you're getting the reflected light down lower Lies. reflected light in the trunk from the ground so you've got to bung some of those warmer tones in where the uh, where the lights reflecting from the ground back up into the trunk I seem to have lost a little bit of that uh, shadow tone of the foliage, so I'll mix a bit of that up. There's, uh, there's plenty of that sort of uh, shadow tone there because the uh, sun's directly overhead, very high because it's summer. It's casting a lot of a lot of the leaves can't get the full light, so they're in shadow. I get that tone right, I'll be right. Not too bad, but you just got to very lightly touch. More up here. Oop, where'd that come from? Darker tone. Off there. there. Got this in the bin. Okay, I'll just stand back for a minute. Right, next biggest difference. Uh, even though that uh, that raw linen has a beautiful colour and it's fairly close to the colour of that grass, there's still some stronger chromatic saturation in that grass. So let's pump it up a bit. Lighten the tone with yellow ochre and white. Let's see what we've got here. That's not right. Not what I wanted. Go lighter. And burnt sienna. Like I said, when you work on location, you get to see the subtleties of what you want much clearer. Bit of magenta to kill it all, oh, that's too much magenta. I do want to kill the chroma slightly, so I'm going to bung a little bit of blue from that sky in. Mix up a nice big brew there. Very lightly touching. Letting a lot of the raw linen show through. Quite interesting, just here I feel like I need a lighter tone, so I'll lighten that up with plenty of white and orange. Half mix, I love the half mix. Bung it in chunky so it looks like rocks and whatever else that you need. Like that. around the water's edge, just lightly, lightly touch. There's a nice light tone through here where the water is uh, meeting the land, just on the bank back here. I'm not in the way, am I? No. Okay. Right. Just bung that in like so.
All right, next trick is I've put the water in. And as you can see, that water is beautiful and soft. And I've just basically blocked it in, haven't gone and blended it much yet. The reason I haven't is because trying to blend that orange and that blue together is so easy to get a grey. So I like to just put them next to each other for a while and when I'm ready then I'll blend. But not overdo it. Let's have a look. I might go from the blue and go upwards into that. Must wipe it every time from the blue and go up. It just softens that edge. Now in here I'll get a bit more blue on the knife. Maybe just lightly, lightly drag it through. Constantly keeping the knife clean. Downward marks to give the reflective quality. Right. Oops, what kind of weird tone is that? Hang on. Just putting a little bit of those tops or whatever they are in. Touch, what do we got there? Oops. Just chunking it up a bit because I want the cliff to be really thick and chunky in contrast to the thin water. a bit of a headland out here somewhere. It's looking good having this edge here soft. One, because it is soft, and two, it's not the focal point, so I'm trying to soften it even more. This paper towel is fantastic stuff. Let's just get that little mark there out. Clean that off. Okay, now. It's getting to that point where I've got to do a lot more looking and less actual painting, so I might stand back and have another look. What are we doing here? Let's get some white, almost pure white. Just a little bit of light hitting the tree, not too much. Take a little bit of that back in like so. Okay, now, I'll just mix up a tiny bit of sky colour here. Cobalt blue, white.
very lightly touched. Just notice there's the tiniest, hang on, we'll just tone that off a bit with a bit of magenta and blue. Oh, look at that dragonfly, what a beauty, can you see that? Classic. There's a little bit of blue in the mix there. fairly well. Clean that knife right off. Maybe just a few more marks here to blend it. And now, pull down a bit. Okay, now, grab some yellow ochre, just make up a little bit of that grassy colour. A few upward flicks to create some grass. Don't need too many, just enough to say but there's actually grass growing there. Oh, right, not in the way, am I? There we go. Right. Am I in the way here? Who knows? Got a real fine line to get those uh, because they're standing right in amongst the grass. Sometimes painting the odd blade here and there's actually a good thing. Don't get too carried away because I like to uh, give the illusion of stuff, and sometimes giving the illusion is just by bunging in just the odd bit of grass here and there, and that'll feel. more like what we're trying to achieve. Just got to uh, give the illusion of what's going on by painting in the order of visual importance and then the human eye sees the rest. So if you want that to be grass, you paint it the colour of grass, but then you've got to suggest somewhere that it is grass. And so somewhere where light meets dark, for example, we put an upward mark then, and it makes it very obvious all of a sudden, oh yes, we can see that's grass and it's not just a dry, flat piece of dirt. Things like that, they just suggest what they are. Right, keep that clean. Gonna pull that down ever so slightly there. Well, that's about it. That's about the bulk of uh, everything there. As you know, what I'm trying to do is just capture that moment in time. And uh, that's pretty much caught the feeling of what's there. 
pretty much. Hang on, I'm seeing a couple of things all of a sudden. <laughs> Let's just drop in. It's a slight. Slight feeling maybe of a rock here and there dropping into the water. Well, that's about it so what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off and let you have a look at it now remember if you like the video to like the video to subscribe and forward it on to your friend till next time cheers thank you Okay, well there's the painting. Now, let's zoom in and have a look at the palette. Alright, we'll go through the colours. Cobalt Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Orange, Titanium White, Permanent Magenta and Viridian Green. Okay, let's come in and have a close up and look at the mixing I've done. As you know, I like to half mixing, given the old rainbow effects. It's such a good fun and love love doing that all right cheers that's the end of another video and there's your painting just remember to subscribe and we'll see you down the road cheers